Good, good morning, morning Alistair. <laughs> Hello there, Gabby. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. You? Yes, it's nice to hear you. Nice to hear you doing fine. Absolutely. Considering <laughs> when you were a considering when you were a player, you used to say to me, "You'll never, you'll never catch me doing any punditry work." You know? <laughs> Did you, Gabby? Did you say that? No, oh, Gabby and uh, and uh, his sidekick. Um, um, Ashley Young used to say, oh, that, not at all, that's not for us, we'll never be doing anything like that. It, it, it's nice to know, Gabby, it's to, to quote the great Groucho Marx, I have my principles, and if you don't like them, I have others. You know? <laughs> I've been dreading but, this for the, all, all evening. Martin, you're, so. Martin, you're absolutely spot on. Gabby, I haven't known him a long time, but I've known him enough to say that he is a leopard that can and will change his spots. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm delighted because I, I listened to Gabby and he uh, he actually, no, he's obviously doing some homework. He gets to know the players because he, when he played in the Premier League, he hadn't got a clue who we were playing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, honestly, I, you know, it, used to be, it used to be really funny because I used to have to tell them, remind them on uh, on a Thursday, big, uh, he and uh, big John Carew, John was usually a, John was usually making his way up from London, some nightclub or other, and uh, so he used to have to remind them. By the way, it's it's Manchester United, Old Trafford, and and, and Gabby used to say, "Where's Old Trafford?" You know? <laughs> Martin, I want you, I want you, if I may, bring you to the, the the game tonight. You've obviously sampled and been very very successful um, as a Celtic manager, and you know the Old Firm game as well as anybody. Before I move on to the game itself, Martin, just tell me how impressed have you been so far with uh, Ange uh, Postacoglu's um, results and the way he's taken Celtic forward? Uh, very impressed indeed. Uh, he is. Uh, he came in at the start. Uh, I think that uh, people were wondering who this character was. Um, took a little bit of time to bed in. Uh, obviously, the results not weren't going fantastically well. But he's turned all of that around. I think his personality is terrific. I think the crowd have really taken to him. And uh, it's been a terrific effort by him. Mm. Really terrific. Yeah. I wanted to know your thoughts, actually, about um, Ramsey joining Rangers. Um, because we've had endless discussions about it across the network the last couple of days and about whether or not um, it's fair uh, on everybody else in the league. Um, or whether or not it's just football and it's just one of those things that happen. It's a loan deal. Uh, sorry, why, why, why are you talking about this being fair or unfair? You know? Well, I'm going to throw him under the bus a little bit, Adrian Durham. I don't think he'll mind, actually, if, if I repeat this. But he was saying that in terms of the foot of the bills, the wages being paid by Juventus, that it's not actually fair for that deal to go ahead uh, for him to then join Rangers. I, I see. Well, when have you ever, you've been doing this programme for quite some time, when has anything ever been fair in football? Um <laughs> I just, uh, I, I think it's the nature of the game. And if you get an opportunity to do, to do it, why not? That is exactly what Ali McCoy's had to say yeah. about it yesterday, actually. After, is that right? I, yeah, I think it's the exact same, Martin, I do. Because it, as, it, long, as long as you're not um, breaking the rules, you, you know, you can use them clearly. As anybody would, you want to use them to your, to, to your advantage. I think it's a fantastic signing for Rangers, Martin. I really do. In terms of, and I, I believe Rangers needed that boost because I don't know whether you agree or not. I've certainly said since the winter break, I think the momentum has gone with Celtic a little bit. Absolutely, Ali. Absolutely. It's, uh, and uh, remarkably at the weekend, you know, at the turnaround, the weekend, you know, from from a from a four point, the Rangers leading three two, mm -hmm. then late equaliser, then Celtic getting the late winner, you yeah. know, it's and and Celtic at home. Now I, I'm not. What's uh, are the are some of the lads making their way back by travelling back from the <coughs> from uh, yeah from, I, I, uh, what, from where I'm, from what I've heard so far, Martin. Yeah. Clearly, both teams will be missing key players, but I think. Um, the, the Japanese forward, is it Deza Maeda? I think he played 20 minutes against Saudi Arabia, so he's got a chance. But however, Tom Rogic, I think, started for Australia on Tuesday, so I don't mm -hmm. think he'll play. Whereas yeah. Morelos for Rangers, he wasn't involved with Colombia, but he's away with Colombia and he won't play either. No, that's right. That's right. Yeah. No, it's really interesting. No, it's getting... Um, yeah, it, it's and it's all set up. And I think that... Uh, you know, the winners, I don't mean the winners of today's game, but the winners, obviously, of the league yeah. uh, will go straight into the Champions League. 
Martin and Ali, you've probably seen a lot of um, top players come to the Scottish Premier League and it's not going to be easy, is it, Ali? You know, you, 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 Ramsey's a quality player, but you mentioned a couple of weeks ago that players have come to Rangers 100%. and thought it may be an easy ride, but it's a very <clears throat> tough league, isn't it? Physical. 100%, and I think I think Martin will probably say the same. That there's, that I can only speak from the Rangers side of it. I've seen players come up and it's taken them a little bit by surprise, particularly old firm game, Martin. Very much so again, and absolutely. I, you know, you step up. I mean, I, I, the Rangers side that uh, that I was uh, when I went to Celtic was up against was just a remarkable team, absolutely yeah. remarkable side. You know, you had uh, De Boer, you had Van Bronckers playing, you had all of these players. Just Michael Moles, fantastic player as well too. But they were just. Uh, uh, Terrific footballers at that stage. So by the time that I got there, they had well and truly bedded in. But they didn't. They, you know, some some players that we had didn't didn't find it immediately easy. Had to adjust to the game very much so. I wanted to ask you a little bit about um, Villa, actually, Martin, if I may, and the job that Steven Gerrard has been doing since he joined there. What do you think of it? Well, it, it's again, Laura. It's very, very, very difficult to start making. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of judgments. I, you know, there's rush to judgments when somebody steps in. He came in at at, at a very decent at, at a decent time for him, in the sense that uh, Villa had lost a number of games, so coming in and settling things down, um, did did from that viewpoint absolutely. I think the I think the the crowd have taken to him, and uh, so it's early days yet to to make to make. Uh, uh, big big decisions. Let us see when he gets, uh, you know, by the end of the season. See how he's done. Uh, please, I'm not, I'm not throwing cold water over this particular affair. But I'm, I know, I'm always skeptical about somebody, you know, turning things around in two games and then finding out then that uh, you maybe lose one or two. I think Villa, I think Villa are, de- are a, de- a really decent team, and um, and I think with his uh, incoming, I think you, you, you know, Coutinho's arrived there, so. Uh, his relationship with him suggests that he can uh, he will be able to attract some very big players if, if Villa can take them in, and therefore over over time I expect him to do really well. Martin, just before we let you go, um, Gabby off air was telling me that you were his favourite manager by far, and that it didn't matter what you did, he was late to games, he overtook you on a, a, a small country road apparently once and cut you up. Um, also, even when he was in a gold drought, you never dropped him. Why was that? Um, because. Um, well, because I liked him, uh, <laughs> and sometimes when you, yeah, I, I liked him despite his uh, all of these particular things. <laughs> Gabby, I, 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 Gabby used to be uh, is interesting at the old at the training ground that we were at. Uh, myself and John Robertson would look out the window, and we would find Gabby charging up the last three hundred yards to try and make it to try and make it in before a quarter to ten. You know, quarter to ten. But, <laughs> But 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 Gabby Gabby had so many off the field activities to attend to that, he, that um, it was uh, it was something we expected anyway. And to be perfectly honest, actually the main reason I played him is because he did brilliantly for me. Oh, do you know what? It's similar to Talksport. Actually, he's not a great pundit, but we really like him, so we keep him on board. Uh, Martin, pleasure yeah. to speak to you. Thanks for coming Thank on. Talksport breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.